Greetings and welcome to Totality Town. We are officially less than 100 days from April 8th and the great North American total solar eclipse. That may sound like it's still a ways off. Trust me, we're getting really close to this one. I actually published my first preview video over two years ago for this eclipse, and it covers the basics really well, so I'm not going to repeat much of what I had in that video. If you haven't seen it yet, the link is right up here, or you can wait until the end of this episode and I'll have the preview video linked there as well. Uh, by the way, my apologies for the audio quality on this video. I'm traveling and my microphone just died, so just doing the best we can here. With less than 100 days to go before this total solar eclipse, it's time to start getting down to details. I'm going to be in Eagle Pass, Texas for this total solar eclipse. What I'm going to do in this video is share a bunch of my favorite eclipse planning resources and tools with you so you can start making your own plans. Video is probably going to end up running a bit long because there's just not a good way to break this up into shorter episodes. So we're going to move fast and we need to start by looking at maps. There are a bunch of different eclipse maps out there, and most of them are pretty good. Remember that you'll only see a total solar eclipse if you're in the path of totality, which is typically the shaded region on any eclipse map you look at. If you're outside that shaded area, you're only going to see a partial solar eclipse. Now, partial eclipses can be fun, but they aren't going to blow your mind. The difference between totality and a sun that's 99.9% .9 eclipsed is still literally the difference between night and day. So get into that shaded region on the map. If at all possible, you want to get close to the center line, smack in the middle of the eclipse's path. Everywhere in the path of totality will get to see the total solar eclipse, but the total phase of the eclipse will last longer the closer you get to the center line. My favorite eclipse planning map is produced by Xavier Hubier, and it's an interactive Google style map. So you can zoom in, you can scroll around, all of that fun stuff. Anywhere that you click on the map, let's see, I was just talking about San Antonio down here, so let's go there. Anywhere you pick on the map, you click on a spot and it'll give you a pop-up window with all of the details for the eclipse at that specific location. Now, there's a bunch of stuff in the pop-up window, so I'm going to point out the most important things to you. First of all is obscuration. If you're within the path of totality, this will read 100%. That means the entire face of the sun will be completely blocked by the moon at the peak of the event. If you're outside, like somewhere over here, just pick a random spot, you see that obscuration is no longer 100%. So out here, 91 point, let's call it 9% of the sun's face will be covered by the moon. It's a partial eclipse. Everything that we want is in the path of totality though. So obscuration is a big one. The other big one is how long the total phase of the eclipse will last. And that's gonna be up here towards the upper right. Uh, quick FYI, if you're looking at this on a mobile device, sometimes the window's not big enough and you'll have to scroll to the side a little bit in order to see this part of the pop-up window. At the moment, you see that whatever location I just clicked on here would have four minutes and almost 25 seconds of totality at that location. Now I've picked on Texas a little bit here, so I'm gonna zoom out and pick a different location in the path of totality to kind of show you another quick example. Uh, best one is over here in Ohio. So you see Cincinnati and Columbus are just outside the path of totality. But if you zoom in, kind of the suburbs of each of those cities is right along the edge. So let's say, okay, Columbus, Ohio over here, uh, by the way, the other thing I really, really like about the Xavier Hubier maps is that these are satellite views, and you can zoom way in and know if you've got a clearing or woods or, or what have you. But let's say you're in Hilliard, and yeah, you're in the path of totality, but look, you've got just under 45 seconds of the total phase of the eclipse. Now, the partial phase of the eclipse from start to end is still going to be, you know, 
fairly close to three hours. But the total phase is the real show. So here you've got, you know, 45 seconds. Again, if you drive an hour, hour and a half inland towards that center line. So let's just pick a spot right here. See, now you're up to just under four minutes. You got three minutes and 52 seconds. So a little bit of a drive can make a huge, huge difference. The other really valuable thing that you're gonna find in this map is the exact time from that specific location that you clicked on that each particular phase of the eclipse is gonna take place. So for example, the start of the partial solar eclipse is known as first contact, and you can see the exact time that it begins. You can see the altitude, so how high up in the sky the sun will be when the partial phase begins. And also azimuth is just a fancy term for compass direction. This will be a little bit west of south. The only thing that I'm not thrilled with in the Xavier Hubier maps is that all times are in universal time, not local, universal. Uh, this is the time zone, quote unquote, that astronomers use. And all you have to do is switch this over to whatever your local time is in the show notes, I've got a little chart that'll show you how to convert from universal to whatever time zone you're looking at. The other thing that's sort of a hidden feature in here is if you look at these C1, C2, Max, C3, C4, these are actually links. If you click on one of these, it'll hop over to peakfinder.org and it's gonna show you what the horizon looks like in that location. So if you have to worry about any mountains or hills, for this solar eclipse, the sun is going to be way high in the sky when even when the partial phase begins. So that's not going to be too much of a concern. Uh, let's see if you scroll around here. There's the sun. It shows you exactly how high up it'll be and also gives you an idea of what path the sun will follow through the sky. For the location I selected, you can see that there's really not much topography. This doesn't take into account trees or buildings, so you do have to worry about those, but at least this location doesn't have to worry at all about hills. This total solar eclipse is going to take place when the sun is high in the sky through most of the continent here. Um, when the eclipse begins down here in Texas, the sun is about 58 degrees up above the horizon, so that's pretty high. As you follow the eclipse's path, all the way up through uh, the New England Canadian border and into New Brunswick. It's not until you're up here in New Brunswick that the eclipse is only 35-ish degrees, 34 degrees above the horizon for the total phase of the eclipse. So you might need to worry about things a little bit more if you're in the northern Appalachians there. The last thing we're going to look at is a final type of map that's going to help you know what weather or cloud cover you might have to deal with from your location. If you go over to eclipsophile.com, you're going to have Jay Anderson's Climate and Weather for Celestial Events. He's a meteorologist, and what he's done is looked at cloud cover satellite images for early April for the last 20 years or so, and compiled all of those into cloud cover maps. So for example, we're going to just look here at the total solar eclipse for April 8th. You have the overview and the table of contents. I'm going to skip down to the part that I always get the most information out of, but all of this is good. Figure 3 is the cloud cover map, averaged from April of 2000 up through 2020. You can see that it's uh, color-coded over here, so the lower and bluer we are, the lower the chance of cloud cover historically from any particular location on April 8th and the days surrounding it. In general, the trend is pretty obvious. The further towards the southwest you go, the lower the chance of historical cloud cover. And the further you get up towards the Midwest and then into New England, the higher and higher the chance of cloud cover is going to be. I think the classic, the most impressive example of this is Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls 
is within the path of totality. Now, at first impression, that sounds great. Totality over Niagara Falls could be amazing, or it could be a complete washout. So let's look at what the cloud cover is. If you click on this, you can zoom in a good ways. So here's Buffalo, and you can see that in Buffalo, yeah, we're looking at a 60 to 70% chance of cloud cover historically in early April. So the eclipse could be marvelous, or you could be clouded out, or anywhere in between. It would be a high risk, high reward kind of situation. Wherever you decide to go, start making your plans now if you haven't already. Uh, quick FYI, hotels are almost certainly going to be full already, or the prices are going to be jacked sky high. The exception might be that if you go to see this solar eclipse in a major metropolitan area, uh, they have lots of lodging. They're designed to handle large sporting events and such. So you might stand a little bit better chance if you're just going for a standard hotel room in one of those markets. Best thing to do is start doing your internet research and making some phone calls. The other place that you can look is on Facebook, especially if you're trying to get out in a rural location away from the cities, but hopefully near the center line. On Facebook, all kinds of people are going to be advertising, setting up camping on their property and so forth. Also, if at all possible, get to your location the day before. The last thing you want to do is have to fight eclipse traffic on the day of. The traffic on eclipse day is going to be bonkers. All right, sorry this video ended up being so long. I hope this was helpful. If so, please consider subscribing because I'll be publishing new eclipse related content basically every week from here on out. If this has been particularly helpful, please consider using the link in the show notes to, I don't know, buy me a gallon of gas or something. With all that said, uh, thanks for sticking with me, and I hope to see you again next time here on Totality Town.